things, let's say, is obligated to in trade, commerce, business, and industry on the roads, because I'm claiming to drive on, the, on my roads as a matter of right. And since I'm driving as a matter of right, it comes under the term liberty. I have the inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, if you look up the word liberty, you'll find that it is the inalienable right to will yourself to move from point A to point B without being inhibited in any way, shape, form, or manner. And when my police officer stops me halfway between point A and point B, he has made an intrusion upon my privacy pursuant to the Fourth Amendment. And when he has done that, he has violated my rights. And so my first reaction is to say, Officer, what is your probable cause? And that's the proper legal response. Probable cause under the Fourth Amendment. Anytime that there is a, a custodial stop, and any routine traffic stop is a custodial stop, you are in custody. Ask the question, am I free to leave? If he says, yes, you are, thank you very much, have a nice day, officer, and drive off. And I've never had that happen. They always say, no, you're not free to leave. Well, then I must be uh, uh, held in a custodial capacity pursuant to Miranda or the Terry rule. Is that correct, officer? Well, uh, conversation breaks right down. As soon as you start quoting Supreme Court law, never saw a policeman yet that could stay on point or even begin to hold the conversation because policemen don't understand law. Policemen understand regulations and rules because policemen are military type people. They are taught and trained to do what they're told, to do it when they're told to do it and not to ask questions. Now a free and natural citizen who wants to have rights at law has got to know and understand the law. All right? Now, there are 19 basic rules that a pro se must follow if he's going to become a free man. And these are 19 rules. And if you'll open up your little file folder that you received with this letter, the one that says Lesson 2 on it, you'll find in there this paper, and it has 19 basic rules on it. Take your 19 basic rules. And let's run over the basic rules that segregate or make a distinction between the military mind of the policeman and the civil mind, the legal mind of a citizen at law to determine what it is that I must do and what it is that I must not do in order to protect my rights at the scene of the crime or at any confrontation you're going to have with any government official at any time, at any place, in any capacity. Whether it's the Department of Labor or the Department of Employment, or it can be OSHA or EPA, it can be the traffic cop, the policeman on the beat, I don't care who it is, a tax assessor. Anytime you have a confrontation with a government official, you've got to maintain your status and you have to sit down and live up to the basic rules of procedure that the courts are going to recognize. And these people are trained to gain admissions and confessions. They want just little innuendos and admissions, positions that you either have taken in the past or that they can put words in your mouth and cause you to take right at this moment in time to get you into a position where you will pay the tax, you will pay the fine, you are guilty, you have done this, you have volunteered into this capacity. <clears throat> and I start off with rule number one. The three most important rules of a pro se are don't say anything, keep your mouth shut, and shut up! Now you will remember that because 90% of all of the convictions that come down in the United States are made by admissions and confessions. That's right, 90%. What that means is that if you can just keep your mouth shut, you have a 90% chance of winning. But let me also go on to say that you've been taught in your public schools to spill your guts and to give any amount of information to anybody who asks you for it uh, for any reason whatsoever. 
uh, on a traffic ticket as an example when the policeman says what's your name uh, George Gordon uh, where do you live Mr. Gordon uh, 1205 North Roosevelt Street I say and your zip code sir is 83706 <laughs> and your date of birth uh, 73039 and your social security number uh, 555-228-972 uh, and uh, are you married Mr. Gordon yes mm -hmm. yeah. how many children do you have Mr. Gordon uh, five mm -hmm. And uh, are you employed, Mr. Gordon? Yes. And where are you employed, Mr. Gordon? Oh, I work at Circle K. Oh, I see. You see what I'm beginning to tell you? Let me ask you a question. If you're, if you're talking to a traffic policeman, of what importance is it to him as to when you were born? Gotcha. Is he going to send you a birthday cake? Was he going to send you some present? Is he going to throw a party for you? Social security number, was he going to send you a uh, social security check? Is he going to make some investigation pursuant to your old age or your retirement? Is he concerned about when you're going to retire? Do you ever go to a school and your children are in school and uh, you've been called to school for one reason or another and the administrator there says to you, uh, are you uh, Kathleen Gordon's father? Oh, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long have you been married? Who are you married to? What's your wife's name? What's your social security number? What's your date of birth? And don't you always just answer because they ask you the question? And isn't the rationale always, well, if you don't have anything to hide, then uh, why wouldn't you answer those questions? Well, why don't we look at it another way? Slaves answer everything that's asked of them because of their status in life. But does a free man have to divulge all of his innermost secrets? What if I don't have a social security number? Wait until that one blows them away. Guy asks me, you have a social security number? Or they'll ask me, what is your social security number? Why do you want to know? Well, I need it. Uh, what for? Well, I need it for, uh, to, uh, I need it because the form says social security number, and I'm a bureaucrat, and I don't understand uh, how to function in life unless you'll answer these questions. Oh, I don't have one. No, what do you you don't have a social security number? Uh, no. no. So, how do you go downtown? I usually take the car. Well, but, 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 well, do you have a driver's license? Why do you want to know? What relevance does a driver's license have with the problem my little girl's having in school? You begin to see what's happening here. People want to identify you, and there's this file folder. There's some kind of a secret file on you, and, and all of this information goes into your file. And if they don't have this information, then they don't know how to function because they've been trained in the government schools to function pursuant to questions and answers on forms. Does that remind you of Germany in World War II or remind you of Russia? Yes, because I was doing 68 to catch up with you, sir. Okay? Okay, yeah. Well, and there's several people calling. Yeah, I do. I'm trying to find my registration. Okay. Yeah. I think it's pissed now. Just wait until I tell them that. I don't have a registration. Even if the court does have jurisdiction. And I already have, like... You can always plead later, but you don't have to plead while you're under threat, duress, and coercion. If you understand the charges against you, you're admitting to being competent to stand trial. And boy, if this isn't the real ruse on you. Uh, Mr. Gordon, you're charged with driving 75. Do you understand the charges? Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand uh, the intent and motive in the crime and the criminal conduct if you drive 75. My response is, understand the charge. What charge do we have? Well, you're driving 75. Where's the corpus delecta? Where is the loss of life, liberty, and property? Where is the contract that demands or prescribes specific performance, Your Honor? I, I don't understand why I'm standing here. I, I know why I came in here. I came into this court because this court has a habit of throwing people in jail and depriving them of their life, liberty, and property if they don't appear. And uh, I want the record to clearly show, Your Honor, that I'm here under threat, duress, and coercion. I didn't voluntarily come into this jurisdiction. Now. Uh, are you accusing me of some crime? And if so, uh, who's the victim? And where's the cause of action? 
conversations break right down the first time or two, then the second time they'll try to bowl right over you. And we'll show you how to handle that as, as we go on. Boy, that courtroom drama, that really gets to be fun. That's better than Perry Mason. Your stuff, so they're driving recklessly to get it onto their YouTube page to get likes, to get paid, you know, that kind of thing. Afternoon, afternoon, officer. Well, at least one of the reasons. Always be man, probable cause of Fourth Amendment warrant and a lawyer. Don't ever forget that. Those are the three requisites now to the Miranda Doctrine and to the exclusionary rule. Uh, what's your name? I'm not sure I want to tell you. What? You're not going to tell me your name? Why, that's insane. Why, everybody tells me their name when I ask them. Gotcha. Everybody does. Thank you. Well, why aren't you going to cooperate? I am cooperating, officer. Who told you I wasn't cooperating? Well, you're not ask answering my questions. Wait a minute. I've answered every question you asked me. Your problem is you just don't like the answers I'm giving you. Now ask me another question and you just watch and see if I don't answer. Well, where do you live? I refuse to answer that question without counsel present. There do you go again. You're not cooperating with me. I've asked you your name and you wouldn't tell me and now I've asked you where you lived and you wouldn't tell me that either. I didn't tell you I wouldn't tell you my name. And I didn't tell you that I wouldn't tell you where I live. I told you that pursuant to Miranda, I have a right to counsel present during each segment of this in-custody interrogation. Am I free to leave? No! No, if I'm not free to leave, I'm in custody. If I'm in custody, I want counsel. After all, I might be John Dillinger. I could be a guy that's escaped from prison 10 years ago. Don't want to tell him who I was? Don't want to give him my fingerprints or something? No, I want all of my constitutional protections. You're making an intrusion into my life, officer. I didn't stop you. You stopped me. And it's because you stopped me that I need to invoke my constitutional rights. Now, I've heard people say, well, well, you're not a good citizen. I didn't say I was a good citizen. I said I was a citizen who's demanding all of his rights. It's for you to determine whether I'm good or bad in your own mind. In my mind, I'm a good guy and I'm a good citizen and I think you're a good citizen too, officer. I just think you're a little ignorant. I don't think you understand the law. But I'm not making any accusations. Yeah, conversations break down on about the third or fourth question. Sometimes on the first or second. Sometimes I'll get some mad, they'll arrest you and throw you in jail. That's right. Right off the bat. I had an officer ask me, I want to see your driver's license. I want to see your uh, Fourth Amendment warrant probable cause. No, a lawyer present right here. You're under arrest. Oh, okay. I understand that. Are you going to tell me who you are? No. I'm already under arrest. I don't have to tell him who I am. He didn't ask me who I was. He demanded a driver's license. Well, if I don't have a driver's license, can't get one. What if he had demanded a $20 double eagle? I couldn't have produced that either. Number 16, always demand all of your rights at all times at every hearing. And with every piece of correspondence, when you file motion, when you sign that ticket, if you sign the ticket, I'm not telling you you shouldn't sign a ticket. I don't know what you should do. I'm just going to tell you what I do. Sometimes I sign them, sometimes I don't. Depends on the circumstance. Depends on the officer. If he treats me nice, I sign the ticket. If he treats me nasty, I make him arrest me. When he arrests me, I sue him. That's the way that comes down. Oh, you're going to say, well, gosh, that takes a lot of time, effort, and energy. That's right. But they don't arrest me very often. In fact, I had a judge the other day who wouldn't arrest me. I went in the courtroom. He told me he wanted me to pay a $150 bond. I said, gee, that's interesting. What are you going to do to me if I don't pay? <clears throat> Well, um, are you going to put me in jail? No. Okay. Are you going to steal my car or something? No. Mr. Gordon, you should appeal this. Well, maybe I should, but what if I don't want to appeal it? Then what are you going to do? You going to put me in jail? you going to take my liberty away from me? You know, there are some judges that recognize and understand that I know more law than they do. Put another way, I may not know more overall law, but I'll bet you I know more constitutional law than most judges do. I bet I read more cases than they do, and I'll bet you that whether I'm right or wrong, they're very fearful of me, and I notice that they don't harass me too badly. I have a good rapport with judges. I like judges. I have some problem with policemen. 
Number 17, always demand counsel of your choice under the Sixth Amendment at every hearing until you get it or until you establish reversible error. Now, let me show you something. I told you early on that I'm in that courtroom to win. And I don't care whether the judge dismisses, the prosecutor dismisses, the jury finds me guilty, or some appeals court reverses the decision. I don't care how the victory comes. I'll take it any way I can get it. You ever seen a fighter that said, well, if I can't get a knockout, I'm not going to accept, accept the victory? He doesn't care how he gets the victory. He's there to win. And that's the way I'm there. And you are in that courtroom to create reversible error. You can create reversible error right at the scene of the crime while the officer is sitting there writing the ticket, if you know how to do it. Well, it's not unreasonable to demand your constitutional rights right there at the scene of the crime, or the elect scene of the crime. You demand the counsel present. Oh, you're not going to give me counsel. Why did you deny me counsel? Why did you interrogate me? Why did you ask me all these questions? I mean, here's this guy asking you for your social security number and your birthday, and he's not even going to bring you a cake, and he's not sending you a social security check. Isn't that interrogation? He's asking you incriminating questions. What if you're down here cheating on your social security? You know, you've got two jobs, and you're drawing social security, and you're only 39. 39. You want to tell him your social security number? Do you have a right to remain silent? He doesn't know that you're guilty of some other crime. Do you have to confess to five other crimes because your part of your taillight was out? And in years past, it seems like uh, there's been quite a few more issues in the last two years than there has been for any other time in my career. Uh, um, it's people, a lot of people have like, YouTube uh, channels and stuff now, and they're trying to YouTube their stuff. So they're driving recklessly to get it onto their YouTube page, to get likes, to get paid, you know, that kind of thing. To get likes and paid, yeah. So I'll tell you this, I have a YouTube channel, I do that for a living. Yeah. I promise you, I weren't doing anything here to get oh, any, no, no, like... No, 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 I just, uh, we've had a couple, like, just already, already this weekend, we've had two crashes in the tunnel. We've had a bike, really? we had a bike, we had a motorcycle uh, annihilated in the tunnel last night. Wow. Um, it totally fell apart. The only, was, only thing we could find was the frame, we think the engine went into the bay. Um, what? Over the top of the wall. It was pretty crazy. They were racing, is the guy, is the person alive? The uh, we don't know. He jumped into a car. Someone loaded him up and took him to oh, the local God. trauma center. But, uh, and then last night, we had some news. Yeah. Short County, and you're going to find this to be true. The first few times you walk in there, those judges are going to be shocked right out of their beard when you walk in and demand all of your rights at law. Yes, Your Honor, I demand all of my rights at law, and I don't waive any of my rights at any time. And I'm not coming in here to grovel before you, to explain to you why I'm guilty. I'm here to tell you that no crime has been committed, and I'm not going to plead to this, to this cause of action. There is no cause of action before this court. Driving 80 miles an hour down the road is not against the law. I haven't broken any law. There's no corpus delecti. There's no loss to anybody involved here. And there's no contract. There's no penal clause. Why, the poor judges are sitting back there wondering what kind of strange and foreign bizarre behavior is this of this fool coming into this courtroom who doesn't plead guilty. Not one person in a hundred walks in and pleads not guilty. And if you took a hundred people who pled not guilty, there isn't one of those in a hundred that could go in and competently argue his position at law. He goes in and claims, well, I didn't do the act. What's he saying? He's saying, well, yeah, I was driving the car and I've got the driver's license and the government commissioned me to go out there on that road, but I wasn't going 80, I was only going 65. I wasn't breaking the speed limit by 25 miles an hour, I was only breaking the speed limit by 10, and it's for that reason that I'm pleading not guilty. He can't even shut up and keep his mouth shut. He's got to spill the beans and go into the courtroom and show the court that he's guilty of doing something even if it isn't right.